Yesterday was a very special day in the life of our congregation. I mean, everybody knows that yesterday um, was a day that we celebrated what God is doing here uh, by allowing us uh, to be a debt-free congregation. Uh, being debt-free is something that people um, many times in life don't experience. I mean, let's face it. Money makes the world go round, doesn't it? It takes money to do things. It takes money to accomplish things in the world. And God knows all that. God has chosen... Um, to allow us, though, as a congregation to be one that is not hindered by uh, ongoing debt, let's say. So it brings up the question, of course, what's next? What are we going to do now? Well, I don't know. There's lots of possibilities, aren't there? Lots of possibilities. Is it the sanctuary? I don't know. More classrooms, maybe? I don't know. A bouncy house outside? Huh? I mean, think of that. If we put it out front, you guys could bounce it a little bit when you get here early and come in and it'd be kind of cool. Maybe mission trips. Maybe we should be getting more involved with, you know, missions in the world. I don't know. But I do know that God is doing something here in this congregation. And I got to tell you, from the bottom of my heart, I really feel honored to be a part of it. And I'm not just saying that. It just blows my mind how God works in this world. This world that is totally against him. And yet God builds things, and as the scriptures say, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'm telling you. It's an unbelievable privilege for me to be here. But as we address this issue of what, what's going to take place now, certain scriptures kind of come to my mind. The other day I was reading, and, and here's one that kind of popped up at me. It comes from the book of James, chapter 4, and it says, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life for you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or do that. What's he saying? He's really saying, you know what? You can make all the plans you want. You can do all the things. You can, but if God doesn't build the house, as we heard yesterday, if God is not the one behind it, then the laborers labor in vain. That's the way Greg put it. And it is so true. I can tell you from experience, there have been times in my own life where I have kind of, without really realizing what I was doing, kind of told God what I was going to do for him. You know, here's what I'm going to do, and this is going to be great, and I'm going to represent you, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And he just laughs, you know. <laughs> God has a great sense of humor. We're reminded here that what are we? We are nothing but a vapor. We, we appear for a little time and then we're gone. And how true that is in life. How true that is in life. You know, our time here in this world is so short. I've used the metaphor of the bus stop many times. We make choices and then we're gone. But the gates of hell will not prevail against what God builds. And that's the key. We want to make sure that what we are doing, where we go, the steps that we take are the ones that God has ordained, the ones that God is following through on, the ones that God is leading us to, because that's the only way that they're going to stand. Are we ready as a congregation to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or do that? Are you ready personally to say that? It's not an easy choice because we all have opinions. We all have ideas. We all have things that come into our own mind, preferences, and all these things about what we can do next. 
But how dishonoring of God would it be if we went off on our own wild tangent and didn't follow through on where God was leading us? You see, with becoming a debt-free congregation, congregation, guess what? We get additional responsibility. Tremendous responsibility. Because this is a giving church. This is a giving and loving community here. This church will continue to flourish. Now we can flourish God's way or we can flourish our own way. But this church is a giving and a loving church. But what makes all the difference in the world, all the difference in the world, is if we are in His will. Period. You see, what my own preferences are make no difference. It really doesn't. It doesn't make any difference. And I've discovered in the past that a lot of times God does things in ways that I never even thought about. Oh, Joe, you're so stupid. So what is His will? As we prayerfully continue to discern what that is, I think, personally, and I'm going to interject many of the things that I think God has been kind of sharing with me, but that it's not about me, you know, it's about us. We're the church. I, th I think it would be wrong for us to go back into debt. I think that when God establishes a church, an organization, uh, and it is doing His will, I think it would be wrong for us to all of a sudden say, okay, great, fantastic. Now let's do something else and go right back into debt. I think that's personally wrong. I don't think that would honor God. He tells us in the scriptures in Proverbs, Proverbs 22, he says, The rich rule over the poor, the borrower is slave to the lender. This borrower is slave to the lender. Is that the way God has established his church? Is that the way God wants his church to be? In slavery? See, I don't really think so. I think that when you look at the scripture, when you look at the cross, when you look at it all, God's plan for humankind is to live an abundant and a slavery-free life. God wants all of us to experience the freedom. And the only thing that we are indebted to is Him. I don't think God wants us to, to have to sacrifice anything for the sake of paying another debt. I think God wants us to follow him and that he is a God of provision. He is a God that provides. When Jesus was on the hill that day and there's all those people that needed to eat, what did he do? He provided. He provided again in a way that nobody expected, especially the disciples. I'd have been like, Jesus, you want us to what? Bring this kid with some fish and some bread. Jesus, are you losing it? I don't think we should be saying to God, are you losing it? I think we need to realize where God has led us, just like the Israelites in the desert, where God is leading and follow him directly. Now, you know what? 21st century, Rosebush, Michigan, it's normal for people to live with debt. It's normal. It's part of the culture. It is the world that we live in. It is the way commerce takes place today. It is. I'm not trying to tell you that every single one of you, you know, that you're going to hell if you owe anybody any money. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that God has blessed this church very richly to the point to where today we are debt free. But it is not the norm. You look at the church as a conference, uh, the church worldwide, there's tremendous expenses, tremendous debt there. But God has looked at this church and what we're trying to do in the heart of his people here and has said, you know what, I have something very special planned for you. Something very special. Jeremiah 29, 11, a very familiar scripture, says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Do you think he's talking to us? I know the plans that I have for you. Plans for welfare, not for evil. Plans to give you a hope, give you hope in a future. 
And is that just for us? Is that just for those that are sitting in, in this room today? Or is that for also the ones that we have on the outside? Is that for the ones that are in our own families that choose today not to go to a church service at all? Because their faith is not there. They doubt, they believe. Is that for the people that are in our own friends and family, our, our circle of friends and family that maybe need some other encouragement or need new, new avenues to try and connect with God? I don't know. But what I do know is that God is trying to draw all of his people to his church. And he's given us a beautiful opportunity to do that. To go in a new direction. He said, the plans I have for you are good plans, plans for a future and a hope. And I don't know about you guys, but I want every single person that I can touch to understand that, to understand that God has wonderful plans. Oh, my gosh. Are we going to screw this up? I hope not. What is our church mission statement without looking at your bulletins? Can anybody tell me what it is? And Lori, no. <laughs> well, she prints it every week. How many of you, just a raise of hands, can tell me verbatim what our church mission statement is? Okay. Let me read it to you. To experience Christ's love. Now, there's, there's a mouthful right there. To experience the love that God has for each and every one of us. Secondly, to grow as a Christian. That's what our ministry inside the church is all about, guys. That is the whole reason that Darcy and I are here. Is that somehow, some way, some shape, that we might be used by God to help people grow as Christians. That's all. Now, that usually takes you know, place through fumbling and mistakes and all of those, whatever. But if the end result is that people are growing in their faith in Jesus Christ, if people are coming to faith in Jesus Christ, if people are realizing that the church is open to all people, regardless of their background, regardless of their doubts, regardless of anything else, then I'd say that one was a success. It continues. And share Christ with others. And share Christ with others. How do you do that? Do you do that by staying inside the walls of the church? You do not. You do not. Any church planter, any growing church out there will tell you that over half of your budget should be spent on people that are not there yet. Now, I know that's a wild statement. But I've heard it, I've seen it, where the, the funding, the, the, the prosperity, if you will, the, the resources that God has in his house should be used, much of it, on people that are not there yet. Why is that? It's because all people matter to God. You know, we hear so much anymore about, you know, Black Lives Matter, white, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? What was it the other day, Dar? Someone, Black Kitties Matter or something? Black Cats Matter. Black Cats Matter. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, all I'm just saying is that as we look toward the future and where God would lead us, man, we need to really be prayerfully on target. Prayerfully on target. As a church, we've... We've kind of looked at some of the things we're doing. The, the reason we did this is because what did Jesus say to the disciples? He said to them, and, and, and these are my words, I don't really do what I'm doing on my own accord. I simply go and do what I see the Father already doing. I do what the Father tells me, you know, I should be saying. Jesus was telling them, he says, I'm doing the ministry and the work that I see God already doing. I think that might be a great model for us to go and to do what we already see God doing. What is he doing here? Well, there's a lot of wonderful ministry here in this church. There really is. There was a lot of ministry when I got here that was taking place. It's reaching people. And I think we should continue. 
there's some new ministry that we started. You know, the, the free store is, is a good example. There's a thousand items of clothing a month. A thousand items of clothing a month go to people in need. Okay? Now, I've heard all the excuses. I've experienced them. Well, we're giving to people that are they're putting it in their own yard sale and blah, 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 blah. Or maybe they don't need it. And you know what? I don't care. Because you know what? That's between them and God. God didn't call us to judge people. God called us to serve people. God called us to care about people. And you know what? If somebody comes in, now listen to what I'm saying. If somebody comes into that free store and they take out items every week and they go home and they put it in their yard sale, put it on Craig's, I don't really, but if their heart if they do this for a year, and at the end of that year, their heart is turned toward God in some way, shape, or fashion, I personally consider that to be a victory. Because people don't do things the way that we have been called to do it. We, God works in people's lives in, my, in my, mysterious, miraculous ways. If you really knew me, you'd be amazed that I'm standing here before you today. I mean that. I mean that with all my heart, guys. I really mean that. I'm an example of the fool that God spent a lot of time on. And I'm just saying that as we go forward, we need to look at the ministries and the things that God is already doing here, the stuff that's already been established. What would it look like if we had a facility, and we talked about this as a church, that would house the free store and do it in a way where people could come in and feel valued, feel cared about, where they could come in in an environment where they're welcomed. They could come in. One of the things we do, and if anybody here is from the state of Michigan, I want you to close your ears right now because we're not supposed to do this. But when we go to uh, reap, one of the things we do when everybody gets in there is we pray. For a lot of those people, listen to me, a lot of those people, that's the one time of the week that they pray to God from the bottom of their heart, that they come someplace and in a community offer up prayers and thoughts to God. For many of them, that's the only time. What if we had something like that going on? What if we had a, a facility where people didn't fall down the stairs and hurt themselves trying to get in to reap, and we had it here? And we had them again, feel valued and feel like they were special and feel like, like there's, there's no judgment here. What if we had a place where they could come and they could pray and worship after they go to the stores and stuff? I mean, what if? Is that not a way of honoring God? Is that not something that God is already doing? Is that not going where God is already calling us? See, we, these are some of the things we've been kicking around talking about. I'm wearing the spark shirt today. Youth are the heart of this church, guys. You and I will be gone one of these days very shortly. All right? I got news for you. Shortly. Hear what I'm saying? Vapors, mist, they disappear, right? We won't be here forever. But the future of what we are doing here, the future of what we do here to honor God really rest in the lives of our children. What if we had a place where kids could come? A safe environment, a place where they could come and they could do, th and they do things differently today than we did, right? I mean, come on. Screens, phones, all that kind of technology. It's a way, I mean, I think Leah, when she went to kindergarten, had computer class. I know that some of her classes, the way they learn is through video and through online programming. What if kids could come here and they could, they could get a smoothie and they could sit down at a computer or something and they could look at programming that, that gave them a new perspective of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Think about that. What if that was one of the ways that we could reach kids? What if that was one? What, what if church was a fun place to come for a change and not just something you had to endure? I'm just being real, right? Now, I used to go to, I was always the first one in the car on Sunday morning to go to church because the girls were all dressed up. I'm just telling you the truth. It's the truth. But what if, 
What if Junior says, I can't wait to go there because I really get something out of it? You see, that's part of the key is in all the stuff that we do and all the stuff that I stand up here and talk about, if you don't get anything out of it, if it doesn't change your heart a little bit, then it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. So what if, as we set foot in a new direction or a direction that we're already going to honor God, what if we look at it with open eyes and open hearts? What if we go where God is already leading? You see, we're talking about a facility internally here about, uh, that, that would house those things. Free store. Community center for the kids and for whoever. A way to connect with kids. It, it is so important. What did Jesus say? Unless you come to me like one of these little ones, you have no part of me. And did Jesus realize that kids are different than adults? Absolutely. What if people could come in to reap and actually have a good experience? If you haven't worked at reap, you need to do that. You listening to me? And I don't care how old you are. If you haven't worked at reap, you need to do that. Because you need to see the faces of the people that come in. And you need to see the reaction to prayer time. You need to see what it means for them to be respected and talked to and communicated with by somebody else. It's a beautiful thing that's going on over there. It's an ecumenical thing. There's other churches, of course, involved. And, and REAP will always pay their own expenses. Don't get the wrong idea. REAP is an ecumenical program. They pay their own expenses, whether it's at St. Henry's or whether it's here, they'll continue to do that. But it is a beautiful thing to see people that feel like they're marginalized, that feel like life has dealt them a difficult hand to come in and to be cared for and loved in the name of Christ. One of the favorite things, I love doing this, is, and it probably makes Karen mad, but whatever, Karen, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but we get these boxes of candy, and I like to go around and give it to, I'll take it in front of every person, and I tell them, because you're so special to me. And then I'll go to the next one, and I'll say, you know what, because you and I are best buds. And I'll do something to let them know that they're cared for. That's all. Isn't that what Jesus did in his ministry? Didn't Jesus interact with people and talk with people and go to where they were absolutely and he did it letting him th them know that they are valued highly valued and treasured by god are we to do anything less no absolutely not now where do we go from here Again, all of these things are being talked about and mulled around in the church here. We've established a committee to look into this, and if we do put up a facility, where will it be? But I'll tell you right now, I think it would be a dishonoring thing for this, this church to do would be to do something and to go into debt. We're debt-free. By the grace of God and the generosity of you all, we are debt-free, and we have the opportunity now to do ministry in ways that we've never done it before. Man, we have, we have the opportunity to reach kids in ways that we've never done it before. The question is whether or not we're ready. Are we ready? Are we ready to go and, and to follow God wherever he leads? And see, again, it's, it's wherever he leads. I can't emphasize these things enough. It is not about you or me. It is not about our UMC. It is about Jesus Christ and his mission and his goal in this world and the reason that he came and it's all about the reason that he prepared this for us. That's why we're here. Today, as we celebrate communion, I thought it was most appropriate to remember the sacrifice that God has made for us while we consider what sacrifices or what directions or what opportunities God is giving to us here today 
as a congregation. Today's kind of a heavy day, isn't it? Joyous day, but again, a day laden with uh, responsibility. Be willing to follow wherever I lead. Follow me wholeheartedly with glad anticipation, quickening your pace. Though you don't know what lies ahead, I know, and that is enough. Some of my richest blessings are just around the bend, out of sight, but nonetheless very real. To receive these gifts, you must walk by faith and not by sight. This doesn't mean closing your eyes to what is all around you. It means subordinating the visible world to the invisible shepherd of your soul. Sometimes I lead you up a high mountain with only my hand to support you. The higher you climb, the more spectacular the view becomes. Also, the more keenly you sense your separation from the world and all of its problems. This frees you to experience exuberantly the joyous reality of my presence. Give yourself fully to these glorious moments, awash in my dazzling light. I will eventually lead you down the mountain, back into the community with others. Let my light continue to shine within you as you walk among people again. Again, we're reminded that uh, God is the one that leads and guides and builds us up. And he's the one that does all of these wondrous things that has led this church to be a light in this community. We give God all the glory. All the glory. Well, as we go forward today, what is the symbolism of what Laramie just did? Putting the candles out? Yeah, taking the light out into the world. That's what God has called us to do. So as we go forward this week, that's the thought I want you to kind of ponder. How can we be and how are we the light to this world? Dear God, we thank you again for this privilege, the privilege of being your children and your church. And Lord, we just love you with all that we are. And it's in the name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. God bless. Bring a friend next week.